HS Tech Channel. Hello everyone, welcome back to the HS Tech Channel. In this video we're going to deal with storage management on VSC, probably one of the more confusing aspects of the system. We're going to look at managing datasets on the DASD, including allocating and removing vSAM datasets, we're also going to take a look at VSE libraries, allocating and working with those. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to our console and we're going to status 153. This is a blank disk or a DASD. This is 33 9 all 3 that I've attached to the system. And the first thing we need to do before we can actually use it is actually initialize it. So head over to your user terminal and log in as good old sysa. And once you're logged into sysa, now you can actually start to get stuff done. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to our ICCF library and we're going to create a new member and we're going to call it new DASD or something. And this is going to invoke a program called ICKDSF. ICK is of course the program prefix. DSF is obviously device support facilities. And this is the program that formats a DASD. So what we do here is we do, of course we have to have our drop card and we have to have the list card as well. We need to do an assign, and the assign will pretty much map sys001 to device 153. Now if you were running just a normal program and you wanted to access a tape, you could put in a tape unit address here and that would work. And because ICKDSF can't say, I want to access this directly, it has to be allocated to a job, we do init sysname this right here. Don't verify it, if you do it's going to take forever, and then you need to specify a volume ID. In this case I'm going to call it syswork3, because I already have a syswork1, that's part of the two drives that's required to load the system, and then have syswork2, which had a bunch of data sets stored on it for the first video. This right here, VSE VTalk end, will automatically place a VTalk, a volume table of contents, somewhere on the DASD. It will automatically figure it out and it will automatically figure out how, need, how big it needs to be. Now if you're using an FBA drive, you can just do FBA VTOP and, and that would work as well, but we're not doing that. And of course, end of stream, end of job, and then actually end of job. So go ahead and submit that over here, and when we submit it and look at the console, we'll see that that ran with return code zero. Now if we look at the list queue, you can see I've ran this a few times in preparation. You can see it'll actually tell you where the VTalk is, but you actually don't need to do that because now we can go ahead and browse and find it. So once we've done that, that will make the drive at least available. So if we back out, you can hit F4 and we go to resource definition and file and catalog management. We can now go ahead and define files. But before we can define files, we need to see what kind of space we have. So we can do a display VTalk on our drive here, and we can do a files list. And there's, of course, not going to be any files. So after this runs, we'll see that there's just nothing there. And of course, we can do a volume layout as well, as, as, sorry, as well that tells us where the VTalk extent is. And there's the VTalk. It's at the end of the drive. You can put it at the start, but in this case, it's at the end. That automatic size order just throw it at the end. Now we can allocate data sets using JCL, and in fact you can allocate traditional SAM data sets. But we're going to do vSAM because vSAM is pretty much required to get anything done on VSC. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into file and catalog management again, and we're going to define a new user catalog. So what does this mean? Well in order to have a vSAM data set, they're managed by a catalog, which is basically a automatically sized sort of a file system, not really it will automatically figure out where to place a data set. So if we do that, we can create a new catalog. We're going to call it syswork3.catalog and we're going to call it wk3cat. This is important, you're going to need to enter this a lot, so make sure you know this. The catalog ID, this is just a file ID, the actual SAM data set that comprises the thing. Volume name, syswork3, we want all the free space. Of course, because this needs to run a program called idcams, we're going to go ahead and run it interactively. If you look at the console, you're not going to see anything because it just runs it right off the right off the user session here. Okay, now we can go to work three cat and we can display or process a file, and it's going it's going to show us what's in our new catalog. We only have one file in there, and of course that's the compress control file. This is in every vSAM catalog, but it isn't actually required. If you wish to delete this catalog. You need to delete this file first, then go back to display or process a catalog or space, 
If we do that, we'll be able to see our own catalog that we just created. Do note that this does take a while because it checks every drive. Here's our new catalog here. You can delete it here. Although I recommend not doing that. If you want to expand it, you can use four and you can define space and you can throw it on other drives. It's not really ideal to have one catalog per drive. I'm only doing this for the sake of making it simple. And also, I probably shouldn't be calling them drives, but I should probably be calling them DASDs. But I'm uh, thinking in Unix terms here. Okay, well we now have a catalog, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to throw something on there. Uh, we could allocate a file, and in fact we can define a new file. And Oop, sorry, this is coming in the wrong catalog. We can go ahead and define a new file, which we'll do just a really basic file for the sake of having. And then we'll demonstrate editing it with ditto. We're going to call it a test file. Whoa. Okay, this is going to be sequential. Uh, not extended. Multiple reads, single write. Alright, sounds good. We want one cylinder. No secondaries. Fixed block. Control number size. Record size 80. Box size 80. 80. 80. Now, you can use ID cams to do this, by the way, but I'm just doing this right off the cuff to demonstrate this. And if we display or process files, you'll be able to see it. There we go. And if we show it, it just loads information about the file. Let's edit it. So go back to your main menu, hit F6, and invoke ditto. If you don't have ditto, you probably need to get it. We're going to work with the vSAM catalog, and we can actually list the catalog contents right away. And you can see there's our file. There's the actual data extent right there. And then here's our compressed control file. And there's the actual catalog file. And you can see where those are. And of course, they're all in the same drive. Now we can edit or update data. We can edit vSAM data. There we go. We have now written to a vSAM file. It's that easy. Now, of course, you're probably going to want to do this from a batch job, and you can actually refer to a simple example that I'll show in a little while that will demonstrate how to actually access files. It's not too terribly difficult to do, but we're going to back out, and we're actually going to put a library on this drive. Now, a library is, of course, the only or the closest thing you're going to get to a file system on VSE. It's where all the executable phases and such are stored. You may have noticed the primary library that I've used throughout this escapade. We're going to allocate our own. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to file and catalog management as usual. We're going to go back on work three cat. And we're going to drop in and we're going to define a library. We're going to drop it right into this catalog. So what we have to do here is we're going to say and we'll call it user lib. Okay, now this is where you have to do some math. I'm actually going to do 383000 because this is pretty much all you can get on a 3390 mod 3, and this consumes the whole drive. You can just do some division to figure this out. And then this will run. Hopefully it won't fail. Ah, yeah. You see, I made it too slightly too big. So we'll define a library and we'll try that again, but we'll shrink it a little bit. We'll do. Eh, that should be enough, I think. Ah, still, still freaking out. Of course, we can actually look at why this is failing. Allocation insufficient. Wonderful. You see, this is why it helps to read the output, because it says, ah, there's ins insufficient space. We'll take a zero off of that, just so we can have some more space on the drive. Even then, there should be plenty. Once it's done, we can now display or process a file in that catalog, and you'll see it. 
There we are. And all the VSE libraries will show up as catalog data sets. And when you access a library, it pretty much scans an in-memory list of all the active libraries. So we now have a library, but we can't actually do anything with it. So what we have to do is we actually have to define some sublibs, and there's no really easy way to do this. So we are actually going to do it from the console. Yeah, so we're actually going to pretty much demonstrate a way to execute arbitrary jobs from the console, and here's how you do it. This pretty much gives us a command line. Now we can do whatever we want. We can execute liber if we are so inclined. Now we're going to do this. And we'll say test. And of course when that job frees up the background partition we can carry on. So now that we have and that we know that there's a sublib, let's take a look at some JCL that allows us to populate uh, library members. So if we do cat test, you can see an example that I wrote earlier for the wrong library name. And this right here is just a demonstrator of the library and it's a really simple program to use. It's in the um, system control statements manual if you if you're lost and uh, want want some text to look at. So we execute the librarian. We want to access this library. So this is where everything we do goes. We're going to catalog this file, and it's here's the file name, and then here's the file extension. .l is for a listing. .a is of course assembly. .c is COBOL, not C, and a few other file extensions. Well, it's on the same page that this shows up in a manual. This right here is like the end of file thing for the librarian. When it sees this, it's done. Of course, end of stream, end of job. So we'll go ahead and we'll submit that. And when we look over in the console, we'll see that it runs perfectly. And then if we want to type out that file, uh, well, first we can look at the job log. There we go. Looks good. We can also print this out as well. And of course, list just lists it out immediately. Submit that. There we go. Looks like we're running good. Come back over here. And we'll look at our job output. And you can see, there we go, this right here. There's the output from the librarian. Now we can also go into Ditto, and we can see it there. Oop. Yeah, don't ever backspace on that, by the way. There we go. There's our library member, and there it is populated. So, really not too terribly difficult to deal with there. And that's pretty much how you do VSE libraries. Now if you're wanting to do SAM data sets, it's not as easy. Now let's actually look at programmatically accessing these files. So if we log out here and log in as just a normal user, so we can do this with unprivileged access. Let's take a look at an example program. Now C, C seems to be the most understood language here. Uh, if you're doing COBOL, it's not too terribly difficult. But this is how you access a vsam file with a C program, or really any file. <laughs> you just do dd and then in file is the thing that you've assigned. And you'll see what that looks like in a moment. But go ahead and compile this program here. And of course here's the job to do that. It's the exact same thing that you get from the option 8 to compile. I've already compiled it, but I'll compile it again for good measure just to grab the output and demonstrate it. Of course, I have to wait on our clock at the bottom to disappear. There we go. Also, if you're wondering what an assigned file for a library looks like, there you go. There we go. That's compiled. And now, the JCL to execute our program looks like this. So, this is where it gets a little clunky. Now, for vSAM datasets, this is all you need. For SAM datasets, you also need an assign. You need an assign and a data label. Now, you may recognize this from possibly if you're good with VMCMS, the vSAM environment on there, it's identical to this. It's literally the exact same thing. 
what we're doing is we're going to assign infile. Here's the DD name. Yes, you can use DD names that don't start with sys. Uh, newer versions of VSC, including this one, support it, although this version is 20 years old. This right here is our dataset name. Skip these parameters because these would normally be the space parameters because we're using vsam we don't have to figure that out ourselves and it's on a catalog warp 3 cat and our disposition this is identical to like the nvs or zos disposition thing old is what we open it as and then keep is what we do with it if it was successful you can also add a third parameter to do whatever whatever the disposition is if it fails so if you only have one that's the only disposition that's implied to keep it but if for some reason your job fails and you want to throw this away, do old, comma, keep, comma, delete. And then we are executing our program here. So we'll go ahead and submit that. Of course, if we look on the console, all is well. And if we view the output, we'll be able to see this going. And it did in fact work. And we can actually look at our a.test.file. If we back out and invoke ditto, you'll be able to see it. So if we edit data, we edit a vsam file. You can see here, this of course C is gonna open it, it's gonna reset it as soon as it opens it. It's gonna reset the file to nothing and wipe it out. But there you go, that's generally how simple it is to do vsam files. Now SAM files are totally different beast, and I'm not gonna cover that because it is significantly worse than dealing with vsam files. That's gonna be in its own thing. But that's pretty much how you go with uh, handling files on VSC. If you need to delete files, you can do it pretty much from the file and catalog management dialog. If you need to delete SAM files, you can do it there as well. To delete library members, you can use ditto, or you can use a librarian with the delete command. But remember that trick. Remember the use of running that pause BG job. If for some reason you lose it, it's in the ICCF library. You can find it. Although it's also just like a one-line job. It's literally just job and then pause. But that's how you can get a command line on a console. I think that wraps it up.